Good morning, everyone. Good to see all of you here. Hope that you and yours are well. We are in the final stretch, the final lap before Rosh Hashanah, which begins less than a week from now. One week from today will be the first day of Rosh Hashanah, it begins Sunday night. What a gift it has been to mark time with all of you for more than two and a half years. Every weekday, learning Torah together, gearing up for the day as it is, the holidays as they come, and responding <coughs> to real life, including sneezes, which I'm sure is definitely part of the broadcast you were anticipating. So good morning, everyone. We are going to be reading uh, Parshat Nitzavim this coming Shabbat. Nitzavim is a very, very powerful parsha. Let me just read the beginning of it in Hebrew and then a translation. Atem Nitzavim hayom kulchem lifnei Adonai lawechem rasheichem shivtechem zikneichem v'shotoichem kol ish Yisrael. Thank you for the blessings, friends. You stand this day, all of you, before Adonai your God, your tribal heads, your elders, and your officials, all the men of Yisrael, your children, your wives, even the stranger within your camp, mechotev etzecha ad shoev meimecha, from wood chopper to water drawer, to enter into the covenant of the Lord your God, which Adonai your God is concluding with you this day with its, with its sanctions. Now, there are a million ways to begin looking at these words. What I will say is, from the outset, it's clear that when it says, atem nitzavim kulchem hayom, you are all here today, Kol ish Yisrael, every Israelite man, well, that's not everyone. And yes, the very next verse says, your children, your wives, even the stranger within your camp, it is the most inclusive of descriptors, but it starts with you, the men, and everyone else. We don't need to belabor the point, but it's important to remember that the Torah, for all of its progressive thinking in its day, is still of its time. And so it's important for us to recognize the, um, the limitations of the language. That doesn't mean the limitations of the meaning, but it does mean that when we read a parsha like this, what does it mean for Atem Nitzavim Hayom Kulchem Lifne Adonai? You all stand before God today, all of us, you and I. You and I are all of us. And until all of us are included in those words, we've got work to do. So let's do a little bit more. There's a very interesting teaching that I just read um, about the phrase at the in the middle of verse 10. This is chapter 29, if you'd like to look it up in the book of Deuteronomy. Remember it says, all of you, and then it says, ad shoev me'mecha, from the wood chopper to the water drawer. The one who draws water and the one who chops wood. We stand in a week leading up to Rosh Hashanah. And our biggest prayer is not only on the individual level to be written into the Book of Life, but this is as a community. We don't acknowledge our, um, our sins, our failings, on the individual level. You might know this. We say, Asham nu, Bagad nu, Gazal nu. Some of us have the tradition of clapping our chests. My teacher, Rabbi Bradley Shavit Artin, teaches we're really good at knocking our hearts. We should be better at self-soothing, saying, I know, I didn't live up to my best self throughout this last year. It's okay. Let's do better now. Instead of beating myself up, let me find a way forward. One of the ways that we can do this, be more gentle on ourself and as a collective, is to look deeply into these words. What does it mean, a wood chopper? What does it mean, a water drawer? There's a beautiful teaching. I want to see who wrote this one to give them full credit. This is Rabbi David Nelson. He has a beautiful teaching where he looks at the water drawers and the wood choppers, and they aren't descriptions, he says, of menial labor, right? Those are people who use their bodies to do their work. Listen to what he says. Perhaps these jobs are meant symbolically rather than literally. Let's free associate. Wood choppers are literally choppers of your trees. The image of trees has echoes of the tree of life, the Torah. To chop such a tree is to question or reject Jewish tradition. 
On the other hand, the image of water drawers is reminiscent of the verse from Isaiah, Ushavtem mayim bisasson, you shall draw water joyfully from the salvation's wells. The image is of one who drinks deeply from the wellsprings of Torah. What Rabbi Nelson is pointing to is something that I hope we'll think about. When you think about yourself in the context of Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, and I hope more and more of us will be able to join physically present in sanctuaries of all kinds. And if need be, I hope that there will be streaming options so that we can all be present in community. The question holds regardless of which way you are entering in to our collective experience. Who belongs there by your side? One of the most powerful solicitations around Rosh Hashanah I ever received in the mail was the envelope had a question, which was, someone walks into a synagogue, ripped jeans, disheveled, doesn't know a word of Hebrew, sits down. Who is he? What do you call that person? You open up the envelope, take out the piece of paper, and it says, your brother. Wood choppers and water drawers, people who chopped things down in the year that's gone by. We can talk within the Jewish community, we can talk within society. Someone who has not acted in exclusively constructive ways, let me be gentle about my description. They can do tshuva too. And someone who has been a water drawer, someone who has delighted in Torah all year long. Of course you belong, but you also, no matter who you are, no matter how well-intentioned you've been, no matter how active you've been, no matter how much you've given and done, we are all called to do tshuva. We are all called to recognize that it has not been a perfect year. Yes, we could spend our time describing how it has not been a perfect year to me, or I can take responsibility as a co-creator of my experience and make room for another human being who has not had a perfect year and who has not been perfect during that year. Part of what it means to do this is not letting myself off the hook. Being gentle with myself is a way of saying, I know, I know, you poor me. I know, it's been hard. And yes, you've made mistakes. So be kind to yourself from the inside out, healing from the inside out. I want to bless us with humility and with honesty. It's been a hard year, and we haven't been perfect within it. It's a beautiful story with which I'll close. First, I'll I'll answer, some of you have been asking about the song that I sang on Friday. I have a few albums that are out. You can find them on iTunes, so enjoy them there. Um, the story goes like this. It was the end of Yom Kippur, but they hadn't yet blown shofar at the end of Ni'ilah. Somehow the rabbi knew that Beryl, who was sitting in the fourth row, was the reason it wasn't it wasn't working. No matter how hard they tried to blow the shofar, no sound was coming out. So the rabbi went up to Beryl and looked at him, saw that he was in the middle of davening, waited for him to be done davening, and when Beryl opened his eyes, suddenly the rabbi knew that it was time to blow shofar. She signaled to the shofar blower, and the shofar blower blew a crisp, beautiful, long tekiah dola. Finally, after it was all done, Yom Kippur services were over. The rabbi went up to her congregant, Beryl, and said, Beryl, I have to ask, I somehow knew that the shofar sound wasn't happening because of you. What was happening inside of your tefillot, if you don't mind me asking? And Beryl said, you know, I was having a conversation with God. And I said, listen, God, I haven't been perfect this year. I've made mistakes. I really have. I've been short. I haven't had enough patience. I've been angry and judgmental. I haven't been kind always. But God, God, you haven't been great either this year. There's been disease. 
there's been climate upheaval. But I'll tell you what, God, said Beryl. You forgive me and I'll forgive you. The rabbi immediately said, Beryl, you fool! You could have brought the Messiah with that claim. So I want to offer us a gentle version of that story as a closing for today. It has not been a perfect year, friends. We know that. It's been a hard year. But this year has held enormous blessing too. I'm sure if we had a ledger for God, book of life, because God's life is bound up with our own and our life is bound up with God, and that is the mutual covenant that God has granted humanity. We are the image of God walking in God's creation, trying to continue the work. So God hasn't been perfect, and neither have we. Let's give each other a chance again. This way. Not fighting. Just trying harder. Let's do more good, friends. Which begins with a little bit of self-forgiveness and forgiveness of the other. Making room for my neighbor by my side in prayer and knowing that someone has to make room for me too because I'm not perfect. Walking into this week, leading up to Rosh Hashanah, with some kindness inside and out would be the best way to continue the path towards a new year. May it be a beautiful one for you and for your family, for your friends, for the community that you call home and this world we share. We'll keep offering Rosh Hashanah blessings, hopefully tied to the Parsha this week. Let's see what we can do about continuing the journey of Tshuva today. Bless you all, friends. See you tomorrow. Take care.